Hi, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic I've titled, Amniotic Stem Cell Therapy is for Real. So regenerate, don't operate. Stem cell therapy is now mainstream and it is sweeping the nation because of the outcomes that are so effective in all types of musculoskeletal conditions. It involves treating your condition and not just masking symptoms like a proverbial band-aid. Traditional options to date have not been able to truly reverse arthritis, help grow intervertebral disc material, and quickly heal tendon or ligament material. The newest treatments with amniotic fluid is showing excellent outcomes with significant advantages over its rivals. So the goal is to, no, to have no more Band-Aid treatments, to actually repair and regenerate to provide long-term relief so people can back to do, get back to doing what it is that they desire, whether it's playing with their grandkids, participating in elite sporting activities, or just to be an effective weekend warrior. So the top three materials that are being used today as regenerative materials include your own bone marrow. Um, now there was a study that reported a 29% incidence of chronic pain after a bone marrow harvesting. There was another one in 1995 that found major complications occurred in 10% of patients after the harvesting, and minor complications occurred in 39%. So documented donor site complications include pain, nerve injury, arterial injury, potential fracture, peritoneal perforation, sacroiliac joint instability, and possibly herniation of abdominal contents through a defect in the ileum. So there are potential issues. Now, adipose is your own fat, and advocates say that this method has the most stem cells of any other available, which is true. But while it's true initially, Rossinol a few years ago showed that up to 80% of those fat grafts die within a few days. So you take your own adipose, you put it into an area like your knee where you want it to help, but the problem is that they often don't survive and only 20% of them live. So there is a newer method of adipose stem cell therapy. It's called SVF, which is stromal vascular fraction, which does help increase cell viability. So why doesn't everyone do this treatment? Well, it, although it's effective, it does take six hours approximately, and it costs about twice as much as the amniotic treatments, um, and the superiority has not been shown uh, to the other methods. Now, amniotic is what we're talking about right now. You don't have any harvesting necessary. There's no ethical concerns. There's no rejection when you take someone else's amniotic fluid and put it into a patient. It's what's called immunologically privileged. There's over 75 growth factors, and it also is antimicrobial, so you would rarely see an infection. The procedures are fast, and it properly processed fluid contains a significant number of stem cells. More on this in a few slides. So there's two major target markets when it comes to stem cell therapy. In the younger market, it's mostly athletes, either amateur uh, or elite. Um, all the professional leagues have been okay with these treatments. All right, none are performance-enhancing drug category. Okay, uh, you can avoid surgery for meniscal tears, labral tears, ligament, tendon, degenerative disc disease, the list goes on. And this is either for acute or chronic injuries. Now, you don't want to have it the day after an injury, but it can really help uh, with golfer's elbow, ligament sprain. You know, regenerative medicine has been used by athletes, hundreds of athletes in the NFL, Major League Baseball, um, soccer, the list goes on to help them avoid surgery and get back into elite activity. You know, for instance, Bartolo Colon was almost out of the game. And then he had a regenerative procedure, ended up back becoming an all-star again. He's still in the league. And then there's the older target market with those who have arthritis, such as RA, osteoarthritis, other types of inflammatory like psoriatic. Uh, and then there's also post-traumatic arthritis. Overuse conditions such as rotator cuff tendonitis or small tears, Achilles tendonitis, elbow tendonitis, and then spinal arthritis, which also could include failed surgery, non-healing wounds and neuropathy, and then you get into the cosmetic indications such as hair loss and wrinkles. Has any one particular product proved to be superior? The answer is no. No study has shown superiority between bone marrow versus adipose versus amniotic. All have been shown to be extremely beneficial. Because of this, with all things being equal, the products that do not require a harvesting make the most sense to utilize. So here's an overview of amniotic stem cell therapy. It's effective, it's safe, it's easy to administer. 
The amniotic products in the U.S. are FDA regulated as a biologic and tested for a complete array of diseases. They cannot be FDA approved or denied because they're regulated as a biologic and not as a drug. There, is no, there are no embryonic stem cells in the material, so there's no ethical concerns. Uh, the fluid comes from consenting mothers after a scheduled C-section. The baby is fine. And then normally the placenta and the amniotic fluid are discarded, right? But in this case, the mother's consented and the fluid is taken um, sterilely to the lab. The fluid is processed and then it's kept cryopreserved until use. It only takes about 10 minutes to thaw out. So there are a lot of components which help with tissue regeneration in amniotic fluid, including growth factor proteins, cytokines, collagen, hyaluronic acid, messenger RNA, exosomes, secretomes, and then there's cellular components. There are mesenchymal stem cells in the amniotic fluid, um, depending on how it's processed. We'll talk about that in a second. Fibroblasts, keratinocytes, and epithelial cells. Now, here's a study that was uh, recent, came out with 275 patients. It was amniotic versus two different types of synvisc. So it really had three arms to the study. So when you look at the efficacy results, at 90 days, the amniotic had the highest uh, pain relief at 78% versus the orthovisc and monovisc. And then when they expanded that out to six months, they looked at the average pain reduction over baseline at six months, and the amniotic was well over 50%, whereas synvisc was only at about a third. Okay, so a big difference. Now, be aware of naysayers. So the competition will sometimes write or speak negative about amniotic. You have to consider the source. So the best amniotic fluid can be verified to test positive with CD90 markers after processing, which means that it does have live stem cells. All right? So when people write, oh, amniotic stem cell therapy doesn't have any stem cells in it, maybe they tested a product that gets radiated. Maybe they tested one that has some sort of processing that uses too much DMSO or some other kind of cryopreservative that actually kills the cells, all right? So if you use DMSO at less than 20%, if you cryopreserve the product according to the literature that shows that it keeps the cells viable, if you don't radiate it, then it can have live stem cells and the products that uh, are made that we actually distribute have live stem cells. It also has over 75 growth factors which neither your bone marrow or your fat has that many. No comp competing product offers immunomodulation to help with inflammatory conditions such as RA. So in addition to having the hyaluronic acid, all the growth factors, it does have cytokines which help modulate inflammation. So it works really well for a condition like psoriatic arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. So here's some myth busters that there's no live cells. This is gonna vary. If the lab radiates the product or adds too much of the wrong preserv preservatives, it can kill all the stem cells, all right? Now there's a study done by Robinson back in 95 that looked at using DMSO as a cryoprotectant that can prevent freezing damage to living cells. So it showed significant stem cell viability after thawing with usage of 20% DMSO preservative at cryopreservation at negative 80 degrees. Now a lot of people will say, well, stem cells don't live unless you put them at negative 200 degrees. That's just not true. This is not the only study that showed that you could get viable cells at negative 80. There was another study looking at, in 2007, which looked at cryopreservation of hematopoietic stem cells. It looked at several freezing protocols to look at then viability when they get thawed out. And it showed that there are various methods that preserve cell viability. Some of them will give you less viable cells after you thaw it out, but all of them actually preserve the viability of a certain percentage of the total. Our three wants to make a difference in patients' lives. We truly do by helping patients avoid surgery and to remain as active as desired at whatever level. Our affiliated centers of excellence are located nationwide and we offer first-rate regenerative treatments. So visit us today at r3stemcell.com or simply call us at 844-GET-STEM. Thank you for watching.